If you're anything like me, and I suspect a few of you are, you'll have spent countless hours behind the vise creating complex fly patterns in order to catch a trout or two. In this video, I'm going to challenge myself to fish the most basic of patterns in order to try and catch a couple of trout. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm a great believer that every day that you spend on the water, you take a lesson from that day. The other day I was reminiscing on some fishing days I've had in years gone by and some 30 years ago when I was just venturing out into the sport I recall a day at a fishery not so far from here called Hazel Cops. I'd fished all day with no success and in the evening a chap turned up and proceeded to start setting his kit up some 10, 20 feet from me. And, uh, he asked me how the day had gone. I said, well, I've found it quite hard. I've not caught any fish. And he sort of nodded his head and went about his business. And within 15 to 20 minutes, he'd landed two fish. And uh, I've never been backwards in coming forward. So I wandered up to the gentleman and said, do you mind sharing your secret pattern with me? And he said, not at all. And uh, he wound in his line and showed me the exact fly he was using. And basically what he showed me was a hook with some tying thread on, and that was it. And I, uh, I couldn't believe it. And not only that, obviously he was casting twice the distance I was, and it became very apparent he was an old hand at the game. And what he said to me is, during the day, all the punters, me, would turn up, he said they'd thrash the water to a foam 30 feet from the bank, pushing all the fish out. And by the time he'd arrived in the early evening, all the fish were sitting much further out from my casting distance and most of the other anglers around the fishery, to be fair. But he was able to throw a long line with these tiny flies and get instant success. So I'm hoping to do that here today at Manningford. I've tied up two different flies for today. So one is a size 18 hook with just some red tying thread on. The other is on a size 16 hook and it's black thread with just a silver rib. I'm fishing with a Witchwood RS2 for a five weight. I have coupled that with an RS2 reel, which has a decent drag, should I be lucky enough to catch a fish. At the business end of the fly line, I will be fishing six pound line, so that it fits through the eye of the smaller hooks. The reason for the lighter rod is in order to protect the tippet material. Let's see how we get on. Before I even got started, Jace Price had landed an 8 pound, 8 ounce brown trout. It was an amazing condition, a full tail and perfect. 
Jace was over the moon with his capture. I had a six foot tapered leader on the end of my fly line and attached to that I had a further six foot of six pound fluorocarbon. I chose to start with the black threaded buzzer that had the silver rib. Using the available cover I chose to fish at the bottom of the wind. It was quite difficult punching the line into a wind with a five weight. After covering the water in front of me with the black fly, with no joy, I decided to swap over to the hook with the red tying thread on. Always remember to dampen down your knot before tightening up onto the hook. Remember, if you're not getting any action, make a change, whether it be change of location or change of fly. It can make all the difference and often you'll get immediate action. Playing a fish on a 5 weight is a completely different ball game to a much heavier outfit. I'm used to fishing with a 7 weight and the fish was bossing this fight as you can see. I got it onto the reel though and I ensured that my drag was set correctly so that I had a good chance of landing the fish. I bought my tippet so uh... On Malcolm's advice I had upped my tippet from £6 to £8 and it proved to be extremely helpful when trying to land this fish. Manor Lake is a catch and kill fishery, but Malcolm has given me special permission today while making the video to release fish. If you are going to practice catch and release, ensure you're using barbless hooks. This will cause less damage when removing the hook from the fish's mouth. You can keep it in the net in the margins until it's fully recovered before returning it. If you are going to handle the fish, make sure your hands are wet before picking the fish up. I often have the fish to hand and wait until I feel that it's ready to return to the depths in order to fight another day. On this occasion though, I decided just to release it from the net and this fish was fully recovered when it swam off back into its environment. The day I decided to turn up to make a video, the fishing was extremely tough and anglers all around the lake were struggling but the small flies did score. In the afternoon, the fishing did pick up and it was great to see a father and son out catching a few fish. Getting kids involved is a great thing and at the end of the day it is the future of the sport. If we don't get young blood into fly fishing now, down the line we may find we've got a much smaller community than we currently have. This young man went on to land a further two fish that I seen and he may have well had a few more. Here we go. 
sit to the end. That's it. Now, bend down, bend down your neck. Push out to it. Yeah, well done. Excellent, great job. I had a great day's sport at Manningford and stayed right till last bells. Towards the end of the day, I got the seven way out and had a go with the lures. Manningford's a crystal clear lake and it was fascinating watching the fish darting towards the various flies that I presented. And often I would bring my fly line all the way to hand with the fish taking just under the rod tip. Why don't you check out the video on screen now? This shows Squires Lake, the other smaller lake at Manningford. The reason we call it fighting the fish is because sometimes the fish win. I'll see you all next time. Ha, ha, ha.